Thank you. Shukran Gazeelan, Dr. Omnia, for sticking to the time. The topic of autoimmune encephalitis is very interesting. Well, presentations are very interesting. But we will end the discussion till the end of the session. And at the moment, I'm going to give you the Dr. Hanan Abdel-Latif, a professor of medicine in the Arab Shams. And the truth is, Hanan is one of the best people who make presentations for us. And we consider her one of the strongest staff in the world. وانا متاكده انها يعني هتشرفني النهارده الموضوع بتاعها نيورولوجيك مانيفستيشنز ان اوتو انفلاماتوري ديزيزز اللي هي بتزداد الحقيقه مش بس تشخيصا ولكن بريفالنس وبنشوفها كتير الايام دي اتفضلي يا دكتوره حنان بليز ستيك تو ذا تايم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم جود مورنينج السلام عليكم الحقيقه اتس ماي اونر تو كونتريبيوت تو سوتش ا جريت امينت ايفنت in such a prestigious uh, conference uh, under the leadership of my great neurology professors. I'm so happy today that I'm going to start my day with such a wonderful, a fun, wonderful event. <coughs> in fact, the contribution between the immunology rheumatology team and the neurology team creates a great milieu um, in order to reach a fruitful and precise decision for our patients who presents with picture of um, abnormal neurological uh, event and immunological uh, symptoms. Our lecture today is the auto-inflammatory syndromes neurotropism. The auto-inflammatory diseases are caused by self-directed inflammation due to an alteration in the innate immunity leading to systemic inflammatory attacks. A global advance in this expanding field had guided to clinically distinct autoinflammatory syndromes. Neurological affection is a cardinal feature in some of these syndromes. In fact, they are very wide. I am going to um, highlight and focus on the most important syndromes presented with a neurological stigmata together with uh, extra neurological clues maybe immunological and non-immunological in order to reach a syndrome, specific syndrome or a diagnosis. Our lecture thread plan or the objectives of uh, the lecture, we are going to uh, present cases and then we identify the most distinguished auto-inflammatory diseases through, as I have said, a neurological stigmata and extra neurological clues. Following the signals, the neuronal signals, I'm going to group the most important syndromes in five groups, A, B, C, D, and E, in a very precise way, in order to stick to the time, not to take uh, a great time. A group A, the case is a female, seven years, presented with global developmental delay dystonia, glaucoma. She was microcephalic. She has a very wonderful history of autoimmunity and autoinflammation. She experienced recurrent oral ulcerations associated with fever and raised uh, inflammatory markers. CRP was very high, ESR and platelet count. She has bilateral knee arthritis and episodes of periodic, uh, periodic fever resumes with extensive oral ulcerations, progressed to polyarthritis with another increase of acute phase reactant with, with every attack. Uh, chill brain lesions in her uh, toes as we see in uh, In her toes, there, uh, there's chill plane lesions and vasculitic rash. The vasculitic rash uh, was, uh, was responding to steroids and the genetic mutation of TREX1 diagnosed type 1 Icardi Gaucher syndrome. Icardi Gaucher syndrome is a hereditary neurodegenerative disorder. Uh, it's characterized by early onset progressive encephalopathy. It is regarded as a prototypic disease in the context of interferinopathies. Uh, there is involvement of seven culprit genes lead to intracellular accumulation of nucleic acid species, which initiate type 1 interferon mediated innate immune response. The progressive leukoencephalopathy with uh, loss of the white matter as an autosomal recessive disorder started uh, soon after birth in some cases of TREX1 deficiency with severe neuronal dysfunction and other cases presents uh, uh, from three to seven months of age. The clinically presented with microcephaly, irritability, and feeding difficulties 
dystonia spasticity, epilepsy, psychomotor delay, and abnormal eye movements with a peculiar characteristic turtle reaction. This is the neurological stigmata of Icardi Gutier in TREX1 deficiency. And what is very characteristic is the presence of the auto inflammatory chill plane like lesions in 30% of them with intermittent fever associated with arise a very elevated uh, C-reactive protein sedimentation rate and acute phase reactants. Deforming arthropathy is um, um, reported in cases of Icardi Gutierre, overlapping systemic lupus-like uh, symptoms present. We have a patient of systemic lupus erythematosus presents with malar rash and autoantibodies, anti-nuclear antibodies with uh, Raynaud's phenomena. She has a dystonia. We, um, um, dystonia and, uh, dyst uh, and uh, Reynolds phenomena and shield plane like lesions proved to be a case of tracks by genetic sequencing. These pictures show, show the familial uh, propensity for these patients, the microcephalic, the chill plane like lesions in her fingers, the deforming arthropathy and the arthritis with the dystonic or the spasticity in the children of Icardi Gautier syndrome. What is very characteristic is the presence of the intracranial calcifications in their MRI, which resembles that of torch. We termed them pseudo-torch, with white matter destruction and brain atrophy. Uh, to differentiate between torch and pseudo-torch, there is or there are interferon alarm bells, which are the presence of the interferon alpha uh, high in their uh, CSF and lymphocytosis with interferon signature presented by overexpression of the interferon related genes in the peripheral blood samples. This is a boy, a 12 years old boy with a type seven Icardi Gautier syndrome, which is singleton Mariton syndrome. This boy is a 12 years old boy, uh, ret uh, retarded and uh, on fifth centile. He has a very peculiar facial features, high anterior uh, hairline, broad forehead, smooth philtrum, and thin upper vermilion, destroying uh, dental caries with joint laxity and dry skin. His skeletal radiological survey uh, revealed marked generalized demineralization, and he presented to us with a picture of autoimmune pancreatitis and autoimmune hepatitis, with fever and elevation of the markers of um, uh, inflammation like that of uh, C-reactive protein, uh, high uh, total lipsetic count, sedimentation rate, and platelets. He has recurrent episodes of fever with a moderate psychomotor delay and uh, started to uh, experience um, a case, uh, um, events of uncontrolled epilepsy. He proved to be mutation in uh, IFIH1 gene, which is characteristic to singleton Mariton syndrome, type 7 Icardi Gautier syndrome. Another boy for interferinopathy group, we are in group A, group of interferinopathies, auto-inflammatory disorders, is a boy, eight years old, presented to us by a vasculitic rashes over his cheeks, tip of nose and fingers, uh, his elbow, uh, and the helix of ear. Uh, he has epilepsy and two attacks of demyelinating polyradiculopathy, Guillain-Barré syndrome. He had also three attacks of severe CNS vasculopathy necessitating ICU admission, coinciding with this vasculitic crash, and he has acute phase reactants, as we have said, associated with his fever. And neurologically, as we have mentioned, uh, Gambieri, um, impaired intellectual functions, epilepsy, ICU admission because of acute disseminated encephalomyelitis and CNS vasculopathy. Genetic sequencing revealed, revealed gain of function mutation of MEM173 gene, which is characteristic for SAV patients. Sting associated vasculopathy with onset in infancy. Um, sting is a stimulator of interferon genes. Sting are molecules in the cell which stimulate the uncontrolled uh, production of interferon. It is a monogenic autoinflammatory disorder characterized by systemic inflammation and severe cutaneous vasculopathy with, e with early interstitial lung disease. Skin and lungs are the most involved with symptoms, uh, systems and intermittent fever associated with elevation of the inflammatory markers with other autoimmune manifestations and CNS vasculopathy noted in um, Saudi. Uh, professor Seza Ozan, which is a Turkish professor, has mentioned many cases of CNS vasculopathy associated with cutaneous vasculopathy as occurred in our patient. 
These pictures of uh, Savi uh, shows the telangiectatic lesions over nose and cheek, but it's very um, severe or more severe than our case with the violaceous atrophic plaques and nodules on hands, which is very typical clinical sign in patients of Savi. Loss of the distal capillary vascularity with painful ulcerative lesions, especially on fingers, toes, ears, and nose as um, present in the pictures in front of us, uh, up to digital amputation, as we see there, um, there is a digit, amputated digit in his fingers because of the severe vasculopathy uh, due to the increased production of interferon in patients of SAVI. Uh, they respond well to JAK inhibitors, which um, cut the pathway of interferon production. The MRA and the MRI in these patients, this is the, the abnormal MRI uh, compared with a normal one, uh, stenosis of bilateral middle and posterior cerebral arteries, especially in the distal branch arteries and in ischemic damage in the cortex and subcortex of bilateral occipital lobe. Uh, the patient that I have showed you uh, now presented with blindness because of uh, another attack of uh, uh, bilateral occipital uh, ischemic damage. The second group, which is group B, we have uh, ended the interferonopathy group by mentioning the Icardi Gutierre and Savi. I'm going to discuss the mevalonate kinase deficiency, which is an overt group alone, uh, auto-inflammatory. Auto-inflammatory disease. Uh, the mevalonate kinase deficiency results in block in this pathway, results in decreased production of a certain compound, compound which is the granule uh, granulated compounds. These compounds are responsible to stop the pathway of interleukin-1. When it is not produced, due to the deficiency of mevalonate kinase, the unproduction of these compounds, granile granulated phosphatase, phosphate compounds, com compromise these inhibitory pathways, leading to a production of a huge amounts of interleukin-1, which is the responsible cytokine for a mevalonate kinase deficiency fever storm and a cytokine storm, and they uh, respond well to uh, the group of uh, biologicals interleukin-1 inhibitors. Uh, the spectrum is very huge, uh, starting from mevalonate aciduria, mevalonic aciduria, which is the severest spe spectrum or the severest form in this uh, mevalonate kinase deficiency spectra spectrum, up to a mild form, which is the hyperimmunoglobulin D uh, periodic fever syndrome. Uh, mevalonate uh, aciduria or mevalonic aciduria uh, characterized by progressive cerebellar ataxia, and this is its uh, main neurological stigmata with a psychomotor retardation. Uveitis retinitis pigmentosa is reported with uh, uh, dysmorphic features in this uh, uh, mevalonic aciduria. They have dolicocephaly, microcephaly, triangular face, sloping forehead, antiverted nostrils, low set and rotated ears, and slanted eyes with long eyelashes. They have recurrent febrile episodes uh, found in patients with hyperimmunoglobulin uh, D in our uh, immunology, allergy, rheumatology unit. We have diagnosed many cases of hyperimmunoglobulin D presented by recurrent febrile attacks with unilateral cervical uh, lymph node uh, enlargement and mucous membrane affection in the form of recurrent aphthous ulcers. A pathospinomegaly may occur with marked GIT symptoms, anorexia, vomiting, diarrhea with myopathy. Group C is the NUMID, the neonatal onset multi-inflammatory disease, which represents the prototype of inflammasopathies. It is one of the clinical entities of cryopyrin associated periodic syndromes, which is termed CUPS, and characterized by the triad of neonatal onset cutaneous lesions and neurological stigmata with articular involvement. Uh, the journey of the Numid child started with this maculopapular rash, may uh, sometimes res resembles that of urticaria. Uh, hives varies in intensity from day to day and is associated with fever. It increases dramatically during times of inflammation flare-ups. The severe affected children neurologically may present with hydrocephalus brain atrophy due to the chronic uh, aseptic neutrophilic uh, meningitis in these patients and increased intracranial pressure with cognitive impairment. In older children, headache is a prominent feature as a sign of chronic aseptic neutrophilic meningitis. They have dysmorphic features represents as frontal bossing, saddle nose and long filter. Uh, sensory neural hearing loss due to cochleitis, 
conjunctivitis, conjunctivitis with chronic papilledema, optic nerve atrophy due to the chronic increased intracranial pressure. Anterior uveitis is reported together with progressive vision loss and amaurosis in these patients occurs because of uh, increased intracranial pressure, which is very chronic in these patients. Uh, articular uh, manifestations, excessive hyperostosis of the patella, we find a huge patella in these patients. Conjunctivitis as found in the picture, and this is a flare, uh, diagnose a case of uh, uveitis, optic disc edema, Um, Subdural fluid collection may occur with mild leptomeningeal contrast enhancement, papilledema seen, and cochlear enhancement in the yellow arrows because of uh, cochleitis occurs in cases of numid. Group D is a girl four years old presented with recurrent history of strokes. Uh, one of them at the age of two months post-vaccination, and then it recurred every now and then, stroke, stroke, stroke. They do the list for uh, thrombophilia, they do protein C, S, and the usual uh, stroke protocol. Uh, all of them are normal. She has episodes of fever. Um, the fever is associated with elevation of the markers of inflammation. And she has a very characteristic skin manifestation, which is termed Levido racimosa. Levido racimosa is um, identical to the levido reticularis seen of patients of autoimmune disease like lupus or other patients, but it's very broader. It's broader than levido reticularis and is not interrupted. And uh, it, sometimes it involves all the body of the patient. Here it involves the upper chest and the cheeks of the patient. And sometimes they present by a picture of polyarthritis nodosa like manifestations. This patient at the age of two years presented by a picture of polyarthritis nodosa uh, by a vasculitic rash and ischemic bowel uh, perforation due to uh, vasculopathy in her mesenteric vessels. At age of four years, she has a severe vasculitic attack and, uh, and another stroke, which was critical and entered the ICU. Here, the constellation of the symptoms, recurrent strokes, levido racimosa, recurrent fever, uh, autoimmune uh, manifestations like that of polyarthritis nodosa and vasculitis is highly characteristic to patients with DAD2 mutation. Deficiency of adenosine, adenosine deaminase 2 is a monogenic autoinflammatory disease characterized by vasculopathy, which is the main feature. Multisystem involvement is reported and is common, but yet the skin and CNS manifestations are the major sites of involvement in patients of deficiency of adenosine deaminase 2. The clinical phenotype of medium and small size vasculitis that often overlaps with polyarthritis nodosa, for that they sometimes term it polyarthritis nodosa-like disease or syndrome. The enzyme defect of adenosine deaminase 2 results in endothelial fragility. They found out that adenosine deaminase 2 is important for two things. The first thing is the endothelial integrity for the, uh, the, the vessels. So its deficiency leads to loss of this integrity and vascular fragility. If, uh, recurrent strokes because of vasculitis and sometimes uh, spontaneous intracranial hemorrhage because of this uh, vascular fragility do occur. And the second cause uh, of, or the second important thing that this enzyme do is skewing of the macrophage towards its um, normal pathway. As we know, the macrophage development or the monocyte development, it has two pathways. One towards the M1 pathway, which is the uh, inflammatory pathway and the M2 pathway, which is the anti-inflammatory pathway. In our bodies, there is a balance between M1 and M2 development in monocyte development. So as the macrophages in our bodies are not to the, towards the inflammatory side, it is imbalance. If the M2 side took the upper hand, we are in safe. But if the M1 side took the upper hand, so we are in a state of inflammation or macrophage inflammation. And that's what uh, do occur in patients with deficiency of adenosine deaminase 2, skewing of the macrophage development towards the inflammatory site M1 uh, macrophage. One of the most serious disease manifestation is the development of the central and peripheral nervous system. The onset is in early childhood with neurological events are associated with the inflammatory flares, which we have mentioned. The affected sites are the brainstem, basal ganglia, thalamus, and the cerebellum. 
The recurrent ischemic strokes are very characteristic to patients with DADA2 with lacunar ischemic strokes and intracranial hemorrhage on top. Spinal cord ischemia and presentation of transverse myelitis-like picture is very common in these patients. By, way, by the way, MRA is unremarkable in these patients because DADA2 involved the terminal vessels. If we do MRA in that patient with stroke, we found nothing. Peripheral nervous system, okay. Peripheral nervous system presented by a picture of transient mononeuritis multiplex and polyneuropathies. The cutaneous manifestations, as we have mentioned, mainly levidura simosa, erythema nodosum, and subcutaneous nodules. And this is the, 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 our um, share in these patients with febrile protracted and recurrent febrile episodes with marked elevation of the acute phase reactants hematological involvement in the form of a neutropenia, a diamond black fan anemia, and the hypogamma globulinemia. These pictures represent the levidura simosa, multiple aneurysmal dilatation. This is the kidney dilatation in the renal vessels, levidura simosa leg ulcers, and the intracerebral hemorrhage in image number C. These uh, pictures, MRI, reveal the thalamic infarctions because of strokes and the aneurysm in the left middle cerebral artery. Areas of enhancement in the bilateral parietal subcortical white matter and bilateral basal ganglia affection together with the internal and external capsules of the brain. Group E is uh, a female which is uh, the, the normal scenario, a, a female with recurrent oral and perineal ulcers uh, with right transverse and sigmoid sinus, uh, uh, sinus thrombosis presented with ataxia or uh, sudden abnormal neurological behavior. And uh, um, we do a positive HLA B51. This is very characteristic for patient with Behcet disease. Uh, the main clinical feature includes recurrent oral ulcers, genital ulcers, and uveitis, which is termed the triple symptom complex. I can't tell any more about the neurobacet, which uh, is very known. Uh, each onset around 12 years uh, may be presented acutely by a sudden neurological event like stroke, ataxia, uh, uncontrolled epilepsy, or chronic, and this occurs in adults, not in pediatrics, in adults more than children, by memory loss, depression, and anxiety, and pseudobulbar syndrome. The parenchymal form affects the brain stem, basal ganglia, spinal cord, and the non-parenchymal vascular form occurs by cerebral venous thrombosis. أنا كت أن أنتهي يعني قدامي ثلاث دقائق ثلاث دقائق كتير دقيقة واحدة The, the parenchymal affection in these uh, patients in MRI appears as the characteristic waterfall or cascade appearance and this picture uh, shows the venous thrombosis lack of flow in the right transverse and sigmoid sinuses I will tell uh, one point about how the COVID initiates auto-inflammatory uh, process. Neuroimaging and biopsies of some patients suggest that inflammation was caused by an exacerbation of the immune response to virus infection attributed to an immune dysregulation. Uh, this data show, I think, uh, um, it showed how the immunoneurosynapses do occur. My take home messages, the auto-inflammatory diseases should be, should be included as differential diagnosis in patients with unusual CNS inflammation and additional systemic symptoms suggestive for these diseases. Such distinct scenarios trigger different clinical trains of thought, investigative strategies and prognostic considerations. The awareness of this group of diseases represents the most common childhood neurological diseases and progress in understanding these diseases pathogenesis has led to the targeted therapy approach. I'd like to thank all my professors, my dearest professors and colleagues in allergy immunology rheumatology unit, person by person, and I'd like to express my gratitude and um, um, I'd like to pray for my father, my uh, dear professor, my dear person, my noble, and every, every sign of good thing in the world, Professor Yahya Al-Gamal, may God bless your soul. Uh, I'd like to thank him uh, and thank you for uh, giving me such a time and such an opportunity to contribute to your conference. Thank you. Thank you very much, Hanan, for this wonderful